right, welcome back to the Combine. Frank Frangie and I with Trent Balky, the general manager of the Jaguars. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, Frank. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Good to see you. I just told Doug about this. This is media day for you guys, isn't it? It's, like, <laughs> it's almost like the Super Bowl or before the season. You made your rounds, right? Well, well he's a lot better at it than I am. <laughs> uh, let's talk about your team. It, it, I told him this, and I'll tell you this. Man, the culture was good with that group. I, the locker room was good. Uh, when you look back a little bit, do you, is that one of the things you kind of feel good about? Not, not, they're good players, or you wouldn't have gone as far as you did. It's a good group, wasn't it? It's a, it's a really good group. It's a group that uh, really grew as, and matured as the season went on. Uh, you know, they started to trust the process. They started to believe in each other, believe in, the, in, in coach and what he was, what he was uh, building. You know, so from that standpoint, we couldn't ask for, for any more. I mean, they're, they're not only good football players, they're really good people. Trent, I would think just watching the moves, which I love, uh, extending Roy, who had such a good year, uh, the foyer uh, stuff, the Zay stuff, the Christian stuff, uh, even to bring back Hasty. It looks like you're trying to keep the band together, and why not, right? But that, that's, what, that's what it looks like. Is that a good read? Yeah, I mean – you know, for the for the past two years, we've been building this this team through free agency. Yeah. You know, and you, you got to really, you know, when you do it that way, you got to be really careful because there's only so many guys that other teams are letting go that are going to come into your organization and fit the culture you're trying to build. Uh, so that was always big, and what we look for is is culture builders. Uh, because if you want to go from a losing organization to a winning organization, culture matters, right? So looking for guys that we felt fit that that mode, that model we were looking for, not only in free agency but in the draft as well. And doing that over two different staffs was the challenging part, right? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we kept the, the goals the goals. And the goal was year one to be competitive. Uh, we were in some cases, we weren't in others. And year two was to get into the playoffs or make a strong push for it. And we were able to accomplish that. Uh, but, you know, we feel good about where we're at, but we got a lot of work to do to get where we want to go. The names everyone's talking about, Trent, are Evan Ingram and Jawan, obviously, and Arden Key. Um, hopefully freed up to money. I think everybody would love to see those guys back. Uh, what, what, what are you feeling about that group? Well, we feel really good. You know, it's a, they're, those are core guys that we want to bring back to the organization. You know, we also know that we can't re-sign everybody and we can't yeah. pay everybody the max amount that yeah. they, may, they may get. Yeah. Uh, on the market you know there's got to be a balance and i believe this in every in every situation there's a win-win that there's a number that's a win-win for both sides and i think we'll find that uh, with evan we'll find that with andrew we'll find that with duan and, and arden and and uh who did i miss evan yeah, yeah right so yeah. you know that's the goal is to keep as many guys together as we can to build that to, around that core you know and 2021 draft class has matured. They had a big jump from 21 to 22. Now we've got to see the same type of jump from the 22 class going into 23, yeah. right? And then we draft the, uh, another nine guys potentially here in, in uh, the end of early May or late April. You talked about the free agent, build the team with free agents. It's pretty amazing how many guys came in last year that were good players. I, I don't mean just starters. You expect them to be starters. I mean, Zay and Christian and Brandon Sheriff, I mean, they, they were good. I mean, a foyer. I mean, good players. I mean, so, but now it's got to change. A little. You, can't, you can't go get 10 good players every year, right? right? So, I mean, so your mentality has to change. Well, it does, but those guys are here, yeah. right? You don't have to go get them. You don't have to replace them. They're here. They're part yeah. of the organization, just like the 22, 21, yeah. 22 draft classes. They're here now. So you got a good mix of – of young guys on their first contract and you got a good mix of veteran guys on their second contracts and that's when you when you get really good is is getting a team that's built you know with a good young base but you got a, a good solid group of guys that are on their second contracts with with your organization as a general manager that has assessed staffs your all or staff assessed rosters all your career you see holes you see strengths where is this one week? Where you got? Where you got to get better? Well, Frank, I, I tend not to want to talk <laughs> about that. You know, because, I get it. I get it. You know, but we've got work to do. Yeah, we do, and and uh, on both sides of the ball, yeah. and we're going to look to fortify that with the with the off season moves that we make, whether that's in signing our own guys back and mm -hmm. and keeping the depth there, and going into the draft with it. And a lot of what we're going to do in the draft is going to depend on 
what we do sure. in, in this next, you know, several weeks to a month. You know, that'll that'll play a big part in what our draft plan is. Tell me about, and I asked Doug the same question, how you thought Trayvon Walker and Devin Lloyd played. It looked like to me from the broadcast booth they matured as it went on. They, 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 they learned the NFL way. What did you think? I, I think that's a good assessment. I think, it, again, year one is, 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 a, is a tough transition for, for players. Yeah. Uh, at most positions, there's very few pos- positions where you come into the league and it, it just clicks. Uh, whether you're a first-round pick or the number one pick in the draft or the 300th pick in the draft, there's a, there's a maturation, there's a learning curve that goes with that. We saw that with the 21 class, like I said, with Trevor and that group. You, know, you look at the group, that group and the jump they made from year one to year two, they expect nothing different from, from Trayvon's group. You know, and I think, I think you're going to see that. They're, the thing you love about all these guys is they love football. You know, there's not a one of them that doesn't like to, to get out there and grind. And that's what it takes. And, the, you know, the big thing people ask about the, the maturation of the team, what clicked, what changed. You know, we were very fortunate to be in a position where the last six, seven games of the year were playoff caliber games. Yeah, that's right. They all mattered. And wh- why do I say that? Because they learned how they have to prepare to, to win a football game in a national football. It doesn't start, and Doug did an outstanding job, as good a job as I've ever seen done, of getting a team to understand that the, the preparation phase starts on Monday to get ready for Sunday. It doesn't start Saturday or Sunday morning. It starts on Monday. And because we got in the playoff mode after that Detroit game, every game mattered, it, it was playoff mode. And the urgency picked up. The and the team, you saw the maturation of the team really come to fold through that process. So that, that was good to see. Trent Balky with us, Jags GM. You would mentioned first year. Hey, look, it's been a tough go. Two years ago was a tough go for all of us, for all of us. You guys kind of kept your head down, just kept plotting, right? Um, do you look back? Does the GM take a victory lap, or is there too much to do ahead? No, there's no victory laps. I, I've been asked that about ten times today. And, and honestly, I've always felt like this. You know, you'd rather be a small part of something great than a big part of something average. Yeah. Right? So your only goal is to, you know, get as many like-minded people in a building, right? And it starts at the top from ownership on down through the head coach to general manager. Get everybody on the same page of what you're trying to build and then go build it, right? You, You have to have a vision to build it. You know, you just don't start putting pieces together and try to figure it out on the go. You have to have a vision. You have to have a plan. You have to collaborate to get to that plan. And I think Doug and I and, and Shad do an excellent job of collaborating at that level. And then we do that the same thing with the personnel staff and the coaching staff. We're all on the same page. We know what we're looking for, not only from a skill set perspective, but also a culture perspective. And that's the only way you can do it. When you won the South, we all saw the video of Shad in the locker room. Man, he was emotional. It was cool. What what was it like for you to see him? Because it, it, it got me emotional a little bit. What was it like for you to see him like that? Well, it was it was awesome because he deserves it. I mean, he is a quality man, and he's a he's one of the best owners, if not the best owner in in, in all of sport. You know, he he gives you the resources you need, and if you can't win, it's not because he's not putting the resources into it. Uh, and it was good to just have, you know, see his, the look on his face. And let's face it, you know, for me personally, as I look at what, what he went through and st- to stand by me and, and keep me in the position I was in, how could I not feel anything but grateful for, for, for that opportunity? I hear you. Well said. I, uh, congratulations on the year. Um, now, look, important stuff. Doug said y'all played golf one time. Does he give you shots? Does he? Because does he, does he, he's like, are you good? Like he's good? Like he's like a really good player. No, I'm awful. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got to give you shots then, no, right? No, he, he don't. He, no, he doesn't give me any shots. <laughs> he doesn't but, give me any shots. <laughs> but no, he's a he's a heck of a golfer. He's he a really. Good. Well, his whole family, they all golf. They all go. They're yeah. right. They're the golfing family. Yeah. Uh, Trent, congratulations on a great year. I mean that sincerely. It was f- for all of us, and and I applaud all of you guys for it. Thank you. Thank back, you. Back in a moment. 